Right, so in this video I'm going to talk to you about scales of production and what's important to think about is scales of production is how many, how much is being produced. Sometimes referred to as scales of manufacturing. It's the same, same thing, scales of production, scales of manufacturing. Uh, there are main factors that need to be considered with this um, when we're talking about how many products are being made, how similar the products are to each other or in fact if they're different from each other, how much money the product is going to cost and how much it will be sold for how much time and money is going to be invested in the product, so how much money can be put into setting up and getting it running, and the level of accuracy and precision needed for multiple products. So if you're making more than a certain number, obviously, are they going to need to be the same? So those will dictate the scale of production which is appropriate for the product. Okay? So the first one we're going to look at, or we'll look at the force, um, sections that, that scales of manufacturing that we talk about in design and technology and engineering quite often. There, there are variations within these, but for us, for our exams, this is the important set. Okay, We've got one-off production, which is where a single item is made, generally a single item. We've got batch production, where a number of items that, which are the same, but maybe with small variations, are produced. We have mass production, which is where large numbers of the same products are made, and we have continuous production, which happens all day, every day. So these are our four that we're talking about today. We're also going to add in a little bit about just-in-time manufacturing at the end. Right, so one-off production is where the product being made is a single item. And that's usually because it's a prototype, where it's a test piece, where we're just trying something out. Or it could be that it's one-off, bespoke, specially designed for a client or a customer, um, it's something a little bit special or different or potentially it's part of a testing system. So in school and college this is actually quite common because you guys were probably going to be making something to see if your idea works before you take it forward, before you go into mass production or, or a larger scale of production. Okay, um, It's also quite often used in um, film or TV work where what we do is we create a product that maybe looks good from a distance but in reality doesn't actually work. Or it could be that it's something which is designed specifically for that, that show or that event, um, Doctor Who's Sonic Screwdriver, for example, which is a really good quality product, but you're never going to go into batch production of that product. Okay. Another example, I'll show you a video in a minute about one-off production for a piece of jewellery. Quite commonly, um, people have special things produced for um, an event, so like a wedding, or for a particular gala or something that they're going to. And fashion and jewellery design are really good examples of that where a little bit of extra money gives people a little bit of something special. Um, furniture, if you think about places like super yachts or, um, or kind of wonderful homes, often the products that go into those, the furniture that goes into those, is designed specifically um, for that place, for that context. Now the trouble is, it's often very, very expensive because obviously if you're going to make something of a really, really good quality, you're going to bring the, um, the price up because it's done more slowly, potentially done with more expensive materials, but you have to get it right first time, but it's going to happen over a longer period of time. So the skill in the labour, um, you need really, really well-trained staff to be able to make that happen. Otherwise, it's simply going to be a mess. So skilled staff, and they're going to charge better wages. So it's going to cost more. So it's slower, cost more. However, they will be able to make it to match exactly the needs of the client. So if you're having your super, your, if you're having your wonderful home and you want your furniture to meet that home, a one-off production can be absolutely bespoke to the context to where you want to use it. It's one-off production. Have a look at the video now, which is about a piece of jewellery, um, but there are countless examples of people making things specifically for a, for a place or a context. One-off. manufacturing, small scale manufacturing is done as batch manufacturing. Now you'll hear all sorts of numbers about batches 
Um, but basically, providing you're making more than one, possibly two, um, you're into batch production. And what that means is that you set your machinery and equipment up in order to be able to produce a number of products which are the same as quickly and efficiently as possible. So that could be doing something as simple in a workshop as setting the depth of the drill to only cut to, to only drill to a certain point. Or it might be on a on a saw where you set a stop. So when you offer up your, your material and you cut it, you're not having to measure every single time. Or another simple technique is using templates. So you can draw around something and every single time it'll be the same. Okay, so it's a step up from one-off production, but you're beginning to get into the realms of making more than one item very, very quickly. And we would often refer to that as small runs or a small batch. Could be three or four products, could be a thousand products, could potentially be a little bit more than that. It depends on who you talk to, but a batch is quite small. Even within large-scale manufacturing, they might make a batch of things on a separate production line to check that their manufacturing system works. Okay, the products are accurate, and quite quickly compared to a one-off because of all the templates and the design and manufacturing aids. However, you still need skilled workers to produce it because they need to be able to work quite closely with the products that are being made. Okay? You need someone who is skilled and knows what they're doing, which means that your costs are still quite high. However, in a batch production assembly or manufacturing line, you probably have a certain level of automation so once that drill is set up to only drill that far, you can have anyone in who doesn't necessarily have to have that same level of skill, they can operate that machine because it has been set to do that task quickly. Okay? And of course, the other thing to think about in these days is we've got things like 3D printing and laser cutting and that kind of computer-aided manufacturing side of things, which speeds up the manufacturing process for batches in particular. Um, happens in the food industry, happens in the furniture industry, batch production, very, very common. Costs are up. Accuracy is, is good, working quite quickly. Okay, Still some skilled labour required, I think that's quite important.
Right, now we're on to mass production at this point. Now mass production is where, if you were to look around your house and think about your journey to, to school um, or to college, you're going to notice that every product that you're interacting with has probably been mass produced. It will have been cast, it will have been forged, it will have been um, injection molded or extruded. And once you begin to understand those manufacturing processes, you'll see how much mass production is all around us. Okay. Um, mass production is used when products are required in very large quantities. So you wouldn't make a thousand in mass production. You're talking about 10,000 um, or above. A uh, if you were to walk around a mass production factory, you would see a number of machines producing the same product at a very high volume, which means a very quick rate. So you might have 10 lathes, which are all CNC set up to manufacture a bunch of products, and they would do that all day, every day, um, for a period of time until all of the products have been made. Okay, So you might be talking about 10,000 products which are exactly the same, using the same equipment. Um, so if you look at the picture at the bottom of this slide, you'll see that there's an injection molding machine. Good examples are also making circuit boards where they're done photographically and using etching um, and also wave soldering to join the components together. Uh, it's mass produced. Now, the downside of mass production is that you can't make changes quickly. Once you're up and running with your manufacturing, that's what you're making. You're not customizing it. You're not making it then meet the needs of a specific customer. Everybody gets the same product. Costs might go up and down, but everybody's basically getting the same thing. Okay, It's only any good for large volume production runs. But once your initial investment has been carried out, you can begin to make money quite quickly, or you can bring the price of your product down really, really low. Okay, I'll give you an example of that. If you were to buy, if you were to set up for £100,000 an injection molding machine with all the tooling and all that sort of stuff that goes with it, okay, if you sold one product from that injection molding machine, it would have to cost a hundred thousand pounds just to bring the value of your investment back in. Okay. Now, if you make a hundred thousand products, then that means you've got to sell them for a pound to get the same um, return on your money. Now, once you've paid for your machine, you've paid for your labour, and you keep on producing at that rate, the rest of what you're manufacturing, you, you're producing, is profit. So it begins to be quite cost-effective, providing you're making very large volume, very quickly. Okay, and you're also going to probably be paying for quite low, uh, low trained staff. They're people that will be doing basic operations, which means they're going to be able to be paid on minimum wage, which means that your profit margins can increase or your product price can come down. So most domestic products, from mobile phones to drinks containers to cars to electronic products, plastic toys, these are examples of mass production. Now, the example I've shown you in the video that I'm going to put in here is um, injection molding of a plastic chair. Okay, which was in its first form quite a, quite a batch produced product. That's now a mass produced product because it's made in such large volume. Okay, so that's been worth the investment in the tooling for the injection molding. Mass production.
Right, next one, continuous production. Um, it looks a bit like mass production. It kind of looks like the same thing, but actually what you'll find is that the, um, although some of the equipment is very, very similar, these machines run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. And they're pretty much only producing the same thing. Bit of variation and possibly different lines within a factory. Um, examples of that are things like sheet metal. So the, the foundries are going to be producing the sheet steel or, the, or they're producing the aluminium. And what will happen is that these machines will then turn that stock material into its rolled or sheet form or wire form ready for use in other manufacturing operations. Okay, Continuous production, very, very expensive, but it's very, very high volume and it's probably automated. So your workforce are probably quite low skill. Um, but because there's so much material being produced, then actually what happens is the costs come down. Okay, So they're usually part of a larger manufacturing process like extrusions, blow molding, um, sheet materials, wire. Um, factories that do that are only going to do a couple of products. They're not going to have a massive range of product range. They're not going to change what they do very often. They're going to be very specialized. Um, if something breaks down, then there's a real problem. It comes to a huge cost. If they get it wrong in their manufacturing, it comes at a huge cost to stop these lines because they are continuously producing the goods that we need. Okay, That's continuous production. Cheap because it's so fast, such high volume. Right, I've put some questions here that we'll come back to in a minute. I'm going to just jump forward to one other thing, which is not a scale of production. It's a lean manufacturing technique. Right, just-in-time manufacturing. This is related to scales of production. Just-in-time manufacturing is about minimizing waste, wasted time, minimizing waste of materials, and reducing errors. Um, what happens with just-in-time manufacturing is that the components that you need arrive at your workstation only at the point when you need them. And I'll give you an example of that in the aircraft industry, where um, what you don't want is your aircraft engine finished and sitting in the in the hangar while somebody's still busy building the wing or the seats for the cockpit are being fitted. Okay, so those components arrive at the right time so that things can't get damaged, you know, someone's not going to drop a spanner down the jet engine but whilst they're busy building something of a lower value. It also prevents people from having lots and lots of stuff in the stock room. So you don't need huge warehouses if the materials are arriving on the day that they're needed. You still need probably need large large storage area. Okay, but it's not wasted materials which are sitting there, um, possibly getting damaged. They arrive on the day that they're needed, they get used, and then that whole system moves forward again. Okay, This links in also to things like computer integrated manufacturing, where your nuts, your fastenings, the bits that, that are required are delivered automatically because the computers are talking between the manufacturing um, suppliers. So we talk about the supply, supply chain with just-in-time manufacturing. Okay. Now, if the suppliers providing the company have a problem, it breaks down, it's not able to deliver the goods, then obviously that means that further down the line there is an issue. Okay, They can't do the job because they've got nothing in stock, they've got no, no surplus in, in the background, so they have to make it um, with what they've got available. If they can't get hold of a component, then that means that their production line stops. So just-in-time manufacturing has to work very, very efficiently. Okay, it's not a flexible manufacturing process. Things can't change easily. Okay, now at the bottom of this slide, I've given you an example um, of I've kind of cobbled this together from a few different places. But basically, the engine would arrive for a vehicle. It goes into the manufacturing line and it arrives at the assembly point only at the point when it's needed. So you don't want to be the guy who's fitting the doors and there's an engine sitting beside you, or you don't want to be the guy who's in charge of paints and finishes and find that there's still people working with spanners fitting doors. Okay, So it's assembled on the production line and then that moves on to the next stage of manufacturing, the next manufacturing cell. Okay, And then finally it's checked and that product moves on to the next stage. Okay, So your quality control and your quality assurance are really important in just-in-time manufacturing. Okay, So hopefully those, those questions will be quite useful to you. Um, you need to think in terms of just-in-time manufacturing and scales of manufacturing.